Alright, hey guys, what's up? Um, so now that I hoped most of the pocket tubers that just spew out content have been done doing so, um, I hope to share my thoughts to a community that are more settled, have taken in the information of how awesome the Pokemon Direct was. Kind of want to cover that first. I was super excited when I watched it. I couldn't believe it was true. Uh, I made a video before Direct just saying, you know, my hopes. And this knocked it out of the park. We got home, which I think everyone predicted. Um, but I was saying, you know, if if we had a chance, a DLC would be amazing. And uh, we got DLC, but I don't believe anyone was thinking we got a DLC to represent more of a next, like a third game content. Now, we don't know what's in it, but, um, you know, besides legendaries and each... We'll have 100 Pokemon that are able to catch on that very island, and you can trade them, so you don't have to pay for those $15 or 30 for both to, to get those Pokemon. But people will, of course, pay those dollars to get those Pokemon. It, it, it goes without saying, um, and I, I will cover that later. But basically, uh, I was really happy. I was very excited, and um, once I got onto Twitter, things got out of hand, uh, or, or not like it was bad things going on, but the discussion was the same as it ever was, and uh, this time I'm I'm kind of looking at the one that called himself anti-Dexters, or people that the Dexters called for an apologist, you know, call them whatever you like, basically there was some shade, I would call it shade, put on that, oh, what did Dexter say now, <laughs> they did this, and I was thinking this, this is exactly what we fought for. <laughs> Like, this was the thing that we got the Pokemons back. We don't got all of them back, but we got them back. Or we didn't, but Game Freak clearly had a vision of actually reintroducing them to the game. And, um... It was you, anti-Dexter, that was perfectly fine with the content you got, and said, you know, how could they design all the Pokemons to one game? Yeah, how could they? They clearly are able to, so... I don't know. Um... So, so this kind of puts us on narrative that I just want to enforce. Look, we are all really excited about this game and the upgrade that's happening to it. Don't take that luxury and that positive feeling away from anyone. You can be a critic about the game or you know, criticize the development itself, but fucking own it too. I mean, it goes for the people that call themselves sexers too. Like, if people are fine with the things that are going on, let them be just that. I don't see the issues. Hell, I can appreciate what they're doing. And I think this is an extremely good direction that Game Freak is taking, as it might very well keep the game much, much more alive, besides the competitive part, which might actually not be the most interesting figure. And now, uh, to joining, but also to my issues. And um, there are issues that come... I'll be honest, they came today. Uh, as I was leveling, you know, I did a Twitter um, vote just to see where you people were at. And, um, yeah, I think we all kind of got this feeling of... We have three or two routes where this is, could be going on. Um, we have the first route, which I think most people are believing in. Um, which makes a lot of sense. And that is that these DLC were plans no matter what. Um, they probably already were made and could have been released, <coughs> but decided to hold back on them to introduce new Pokemon as they went. Uh, and that decision was made in June and July after the game was announced. And they realized the backlash was harsh. They needed to re implement these Pokemon or introduce more Pokemon to the game. That is an aspect um, because they said that they didn't have any plans. Of include every Pokemon, and so that could be subjective as they clearly just responded that no, not every Pokemon is going to be in the game, but there are Pokemon outside of the game that's going to be introduced. They did not say that, they weren't specified. Then again, the question itself was specific either. Uh, but that's one angle. The other one is that they fixed these after the game was out, and um, they started this in December, and it's made and clear in June to get a week in fall um, of this year. And that brings another question, like, if time constraints was the issue and weren't able to complement the game itself, but they can make a whole region or an area, basically, you know, could we, we could pretend that it's you know, a wild area region, 
If they created that from scratch together with introducing 100, 100 old Pokemon together with new ones, then was it really that time consuming to make all the Pokemon into the game? That that's a question that people are like that's kind of shaky. Is that what they made? Like for all the things they showcase here, like what is it? Two months later, this is as far as I got in. This is like plan or releasing in June. <sighs> Hopefully not, right? Like they couldn't have been done doing that that fast. Even so, that it's one of those things. That just ugh, please don't. And and then we have the third option, which I think is the most likely one and the most scummier one, but it also is ingenious. And if if this is the one that is true, though never possible to reveal it, then you know, game free played us. That is that these DLCs and these packs of introduced Pokemon were planned way before E3, way before the game was introduced even. The Galar region was, all things considered, this was already in the making and uh, they just didn't want to reveal it. That means that they have been holding off an onslaught of negativity which they very well could have actually parried in, in contrast of, I couldn't tell you, um, holding 100 Pokemon hostage and releasing an upgrade, yeah, is an ingenious way of selling things. Yes, people have been saying the obvious thing that you, you don't need to buy these um, th these content to, um, to get these Pokemon. And while that's true, I say good luck getting those Galarian forms that are clearly exclusive for those very regions. Nonetheless, being forced to trade 100 Pokemon instead of actually catching them yourself in these specific regions. Come on. Like, it's an argument that could be stated. You're, you're not forced to buy these upgrades, but I believe you are if you intend to play in this game to its fullest and enjoy the content. We have mute, move tutors and what was the Pokeball, the Apricons kind of thing. Um, they are locked in this region, you need to have been a part of this region and there are going to be tutor moves involved in these regions that are exclusive. If you play competitively, you have no option. Now, $30 is not a lot of money, um, depending on who you ask. <laughs> but I absolutely understand people are frustrated in a full a game sold for $60. Dollars. Dollars. <laughs> or Swedish crowns here was basically more like $75. Mm, I mean, it's a lot of money. Uh, that game should already be complete, and knowing you have third more bucks to spend on it, you, people are allowed to be upset about that. Um, I've been very clear with Pokemon because people took the chance to compare uh, Smash and Splatoon, um, you know, A class titles or triple A titles, as they call them for Nintendo. And the reason they don't have the backlash is because they are extremely upfront with if they're gonna release DLC to keep this game alive. It's something I think a Game Freak should already have made super clear in June that it's gonna be a limited deck that will expand or at least just say this is not all of them. Lean into something, you know, give us hints. There are a narrative and an onslaught of negativity that was created throughout both of course the English speaking and communities but also Japanese you know, people saying, um, you know, uh, b -b 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 what do you call it? Well, he was death threatened at times, apparently. And, you know, bring back national decks. People were absolutely onslaught in Matsuda. <laughs> there are two ways of seeing this. Either this was a great PR and they got to talk that, you know, this is the game. And, you know, people got, due to the love of the Pokemon that was missing, they got the response they wanted when we reduced it like this. But I don't think it is that. I absolutely think that they was hush hush about all of this, and um, I think it damaged them. I think they're just gonna pay the price for not being transparent in this kind of development. And I actually have people who told me, you know, they don't own us to tell us stuff like that. You know, we are not entitled. Um, yeah, we aren't. But we are consumers. We are people who are buying the game, and by buying them, keeping this company alive. Yes, I think we are entitled to a, to a company that are honest with us, as we are the one buying and enjoying the content. Why should we ask for content? 
that is provided for us. This is absolutely holding it back for us. And like I said, if they just said that, you know, they're going to be more Pokemons later on, instead of answering, we have no plans to. There are different dialogues here that created a narrative that they couldn't stop. So, um, mm, 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 mm. if they just went that obvious way, it would have been a lot better. Um, like I said, Smash were real obvious or open with that. And that game complete right now is $130. And I don't see people complaining about that as long as I'm aware. And um, that's it. Like, if you say it's going to cost this, it's gonna, this is going to happen. There's going to be Pokemon or uh, there's going to be content you can provide and buy. And it's going to keep this game alive. I do believe that would have helped this game significantly. Now, it does now, and people are happy about it, but it could have been avoided so much backlash if they just been honest there. Um, I guess I'm going to cover the other one. People are comparing these games to be a third version of the game, um, which I believe it is. And I like that aspect, that no, we don't get a whole new game but we need to replay it and then there are some extra features no we get the extra features because we buy the game oh sorry the issue is people are comparing it to emerald crystal platinum black and white too to an extent people are actually starting to avoid that one in the comparison which i think is good uh but also ultra sun and moon now i don't want to don't be arrogant but emerald Game, Game Boy Advance, what is that, two, 2003, four. Game Boy Advance never had internet, ever. Um, come on. And I believe the release date was three years apart, so it was even longer than a regular scheduled one. Um, but that's not the issue, it's just the possibility of DLC for Game Boy Advance didn't exist. It barely existed on PlayStation 2 and GameCube at the time, or Xbox for that matter. I do believe Xbox introduced this slowly. DLC for PlayStation was kind of shaky. Now we have um, Crystal. It goes without saying. Like Nintendo 64 area. Yeah, that never asked for. As for Donkey Kong Country 64 DLC, come on, it's not a fair comparison. It didn't even exist at the time. You know, if you want an expansion pack, you got Brood War, Starcraft, a new game. Expansion. There you go. <laughs> But then we have, of course, always one Platinum. It it is on the fence, um, but highly unlikely. Um, they have mystery gifts which was unlocked through I think through Pearl and Diamond uh, that had an exploit basically. But um, was it two thousand five six? So yeah, I do believe there are. It could be later, or it could really be two thousand nine. For all the matters, I'm not that good of a track. But anything I could say is. When Black and White was out, there was a possibility for DLC. Issue was the console, DS. Didn't have an e-store. Um, shaky internet. I don't believe how much internet connectivity it did have. Uh, it was I was actually looking upon uh, Mario Mario Kart DS. Uh, I think there is where we are, basically. And um, it's not there. It definitely wasn't a console that could have provided that um, much information for a complete game. And you know the SD card and what's not. It had to be, of course, as, as it didn't have an internal memory, you need to be on the SD cards. And I wonder how good that is. And that's probably the same situation with the 3DS, um, that you need an SD card to provide that. However, um, X and Y never got an expansion. You know, Whereas my Pokemon C game freak, um, but that was a game I actually was asking for, and then come Auras, and then come Ultra Sun, and then we, or Sun and Moon, and then come Ultra Sun and Moon. Nobody in the right mind, unless you're Joe from Cerebi, uh was questioning whether or not Ultra Sun and Moon should have been DLC. I got the response from Joe, they don't do DLC. Uh, 3DS can't handle DLC. At the same month, I bought, bought Radiate that's History, a great Japanese RPGs, who had... DLC, they can do that, and I hated Ultra Sun and Moon for that, because they took a full price game for a free hour at tops content with barely anything new in that game. Mm. So this is why the development of these new upgrades, um, the Shield variant and the other one being the Tundra stuffy. <sighs> 
they need to happen like this. I think it's a great way of getting this out. I really do. I think this is the best thing that happened to Pokemon hands down in in a lot of years. But it's fair to criticize it, and it's cr fair to criticize for all of the other reasons besides the excitement of the game itself. The talk they created, phenomenal. Uh, what they were showcasing, very interesting stuff. But we are comparing it to a game that already at launch felt the bare bones. It was a short game with a really clumsy story, and not necessarily that hard of a game either. A Pokemon isn't necessarily a hard game, but they made, for me at least, my trip a lot simpler. Uh, my biggest critique versus the game was that the wild area just was one big area that bothered me so much. And seeing now that these two up or these two new DLCs will even with their own wild area, it's gonna be so exciting. It's gonna be tremendous to experience that. It it has to be. Um, I never been more excited. And I was in my all time low going into this direct knowing that we probably won't get anything exciting. And I was partially through with the mystery dungeon. I was like, yeah, fuck you. <laughs> and then it is. And it looked great. And um, I think this is absolutely the route to be taken. But yeah, like I said, people are frustrated and criticizing it. I think they're feared doing so as I believe this is a very. It is a practice I, I'm not fully proving of. Um, I mean, at the end of the day, we talk about the training of the you know, exclusive Pokemon. Come on, you're absolutely buying this. And people who have never had any plans to, you know, to spend more money on this game, they are forced to want to keep playing this game. I mean, good luck in trading that Galarian Zapdos and say, oh, you know, you can play that, you know, but uh, I, I just want to have a trade over. Good luck with that. Uh, rest I think uh, I, I was pretty much all over the place and so it never it was my intention I just I really wanted to get this out of my head Ugh. but like I said I think I really think this whole thing was planned from the get-go and it just didn't say anything so they played us and played us good now we'll have 300 more Pokemon to go and see what happens about that I think it's no you know what I won't speculate I've been wrong all the way through this so you know whatever Anyway guys, thank you for watching as always, of course, take care.